I would like to watch style in the city and see how, you know, the designer would bring together those clothes and the trims and the fabrics and, you know, how they would go and fetch and sort of bring in the whole culture into one garment. I mean, I found it fascinating. And imagine it, it's the clock sticking 11 o'clock. The next day morning, 7 o'clock, I have to leave for my exam. And this is what I'd rather be doing than sitting and practicing my question paper. I come from a family of people who work in the government. You know, all my life since I was a kid, I think even by the time I was in fifth or sixth grade, I was confident that I would grow up and be a civil servant as well. But, you know, at the same time, as I was a massive geek in school, I was also somebody who really enjoyed going through fashion magazines and, you know, studying the way clothes were made. I really enjoyed the whole process of constructing a garment. And I remember actually making my first sketches when I was in seventh grade, so I was about 12 years old. And um, I gave them to my friend. She really loved them and she actually got them made. So there was there were all these years, almost 22 years of uh, studying and uh, preparing my mind that okay I'm going to be um, I'm going to be in, a, in the administrative services or you know later on I also thought okay if not that I'll at least be an international development professional because I, I thought okay if I don't make it in this exam I have this as a backup but there was this part of me that really wanted to be a designer as well uh, so this also created a battle in my mind I remember when I was when I made that choice to jump into the fashion field also it was a huge battle in my own mind. It didn't come easy to me even saying that, you know, I am a fashion designer. I remember when I wrote this blog of my own, uh, the first time I described myself as a development professional and then a fashion designer, which was meaningless. But uh, when I found Jesus um, and through the help of my church community and friends who have sat close with me and they've helped me understand um, Jesus and what he puts in our hearts for us to do, I came to know that purpose doesn't necessarily mean just these things. Yes, it's important. You have a job that pays you, that you can take care of your bills, that you can take good care of yourself and your family. But at the same time, it should be something that blesses others. So God puts within us this very specific talent. Each of us have a very different one. And when he puts that specific talent in us, it has the ability to bring about change in several other people's lives. So fashion design and business for me was something that was very vain. In my opinion, when my mindset was different, that's what I believed it was. What's, how is making clothes going to change anybody's life anyways? But you know, I came to know that I shouldn't have to use my mind for this, but I should depend on God's understanding for why he made me for this particular purpose. I'm sure that whatever field he has called you and whatever talent he has put in your heart, I'm sure he knows how to take you through it and to bring you to a point where you can bless others. What low points I've experienced during my career, it was the times of self-doubt. And I remember there were days when I would get criticism even from people very close to me and that really affected my confidence. And then I would also receive a lot of criticism for the kind of designs I was making. Um, so I would hear people walking in and say, you know, where are the bright colors? Where is the red? Where's the blue? Where's the bright pink? Where is the open bag dress? Isn't that what you expect of a fashion designer? Aren't you supposed to be making clothes like those? It was hard to convince people that this was a way of dressing as well. You don't have to um, uh, really exhibit a lot of colors, a lot of flashiness in order to express yourself. You can also do it in this way. So in a way that your personality really stands out. But again, I really thank God for how he spoke to me and gave me the confidence that, you know what? You have to continue to do what's in your heart and that will, people will understand it eventually. So that was a tough time for me. I had to hold on to God. I had to hold on to his promises. You know, you can be an influencer in this world by really paying attention to what you want to do from, with all your heart. Say you want to be a graphic artist and you keep dreaming about how to create images and then you wake up and you're doing that but you're confused and you're conflicted about doing it and you don't know how to go about it. You're not sure if you'll do well. You know what, throw some caution to the wind and just dive in. 
because a lot of times it's not until we dive in that those answers start coming to us. When I started off in the fashion field, there were so many questions I didn't have answers to. I had no idea how to maintain a daily ledger or a balance sheet. Um, a lot of other things that I needed to know in addition to just creating a garment. And there were a lot of things that I needed to find out. But if you have the passion for it and with all your heart, there is something you want to do, dive in and then things will start taking care of themselves. You know, some amount of financial planning is necessary, yes, absolutely. But there is always a mental block that stops you from jumping into your purpose. And I believe we need to go past that mental block. Like jump across that hurdle and then you'll start finding those answers. They will start pouring in like you never imagined.